Hey everyone, I have a question for you tonight. And that question is, what's for dinner? Now, if you don't know the answer to that question, um, depending on what time zone you're in, I'm on the on Pacific time, so of course we are just coming home from our work days and trying to think about what we can possibly feed ourselves for dinner. So if you don't know the answer to that question for yourself, or maybe you know the answer and you're not particularly proud of the answer of, of what that is going to be, or maybe you already had dinner, not super stoked about it being the best decision you could make, or if you feel proud about the decision that, that you're making for dinner tonight, but it's kind of a fluke, like I caught you on a good day, and you know that maybe on another day that wouldn't have been the choice, this chat is for you. Tonight we are talking about healthy meal planning for the entrepreneur's unpredictable schedule. So before we get started, if you know entrepreneurs on your Facebook page or your Facebook profile, or maybe you run a business page that um, other entrepreneurs come and play with, feel free if you think this is gonna be important to them or helpful for, for them, go ahead and share that with them so that way we can get as many people taking advantage of this because this is an important topic. Now. I know when we're running businesses and we have a million different things, we're running, wearing so many different hats, which means that often um, activities swell, the tasks that we have to do. Oftentimes we're you know, trying to, to play multiple roles, so we have to do things we're not necessarily good at, and we're uh, always managing so many things. So it can be really easy to put off healthy meal planning, actually making sure that we're putting real food in our faces and not something from the drive-thru or... or you're calling the pizza delivery guy again. And the reason that that's so important that we start to pay more attention about how we fuel our body is just that. What we put into our bodies does affect how we feel, how we perform, how we think, how we sleep. It affects so many things. In fact, the World Health Organization actually estimates that up to 20% of our productivity outcomes and productivity levels is directly related to the type of nutrition we put in our body. And that's World Health Organization, so obviously the most credible source there is. That's really, really powerful, and we wanna do everything that we can to give ourselves that competitive edge to make sure that we have enough energy to fuel our steep, steep ambitions. So I have some tips for things that I've um, learned as I've, as I've put my head down and, and given this a lot of thought and intention and try different things all while working full time and running a business on the side. So I've been there in the trenches with you. Here are four things that I have learned that I think are gonna be really helpful. This is also on the Elevate Mobile Fitness blog. So if you don't feel like taking notes, you can also hop over to, to refresh yourself on all these points over at elevatemobilefitness.com forward slash blog. The first takeaway that I have learned that I'm excited to share with you is that you should always, 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 always have a list with you when you go to the grocery store. This is paramount and it is such an easy step to miss and to forget and to skip out on. How many times have you found yourself wandering the grocery aisles because you know there's nothing at home for dinner, nothing that you can cook, and you just kind of pick and see whatever jumps out at you. But then you get home and you still don't know what to make. Or maybe you have like one meal that you can assemble. And meanwhile, everything starts spoiling in your refrigerator because you don't know how to put it all together. This is no good, guys. You've got to have a plan. So promise me you will not go to the grocery without a list. Even if you're scribbling it you know, on the car. And I'm, I would love to see you get even more um, intentional about that. And I've got some resources later I'll talk about to share how you can get super, super um, big picture with your meal planning. So you only have to do it every few months, but we'll talk about that later. So just for now, baby steps, make sure you never go to the grocery store without a list. It will make such a difference. My takeaway number two, and I think you're going to like this one, 
is I want you to start batching your food like you would batch your social media posts or your blog posts or the products that you create if you sell physical products. Whatever the core of your business is that you're doing over and over, hopefully you are finding some sort of system with that to, to batch those things that happen on a regular basis so that you don't have to wake up every day and think, well, what am I going to post about or what am I going to write about or what do I need to make today, right? Well, the same concept applies to meal planning and meal preparation. Batch making sure to you can take it a whole lot further than that and I've got again great resources I'll tell you more about at the end how to find out more about really taking advantage of this whole concept of batching when it comes to making your meals you know freezer is your friend so don't be afraid to batch meals um, I also have a great resource at the end that I'm going to tell you about for batching breakfast recipes. I've got a whole a whole slew of rec breakfast recipes that you can make just once for the week and then have it done for the whole week long. So batching is your friend. Batch your meals just like you would batch your social media. The third takeaway is that I want you to leave room for deciding what to eat when. Now this may seem a little bit surprising to you because I've just talked about having all this structure. Well, life happens, you know, as we just mentioned, tasks swell, things constantly pop up, and then we have this whole little thing called a personal life that sometimes gets in the way, right? So I, even though I like to have a plan for what I'm going to eat that week, I actually like to leave it open as to which night I'm going to eat what, at least when it comes to dinner, right? So different things can take different amounts of time to make, although I'm hoping that you are only selecting recipes that are taking 30 minutes or less. But even so, you know, some one recipe might take 10 minutes and another 30, and you want to leave a little bit of room for flexibility so that if something happens, you can kind of run to that quicker option. And just let's just be honest, sometimes different foods taste better or sound better than others do on different days. So I like to leave room for that flexibility, especially being when life's a little bit unpredictable, I think you're really going to find that helpful. Not to get so structured that you have to think like, oh, you know, Monday is taco night. It has to be taco night. Well, no. If you want chicken salad, have chicken salad instead. And my last takeaway that I want you to keep in mind is that I want you to also have some predetermined fallback options. And now fallback options can span the, can kind of span the spectrum, but I want them to be healthy. Just because you didn't plan ahead doesn't mean, or just because life got crazy and you didn't have time to cook and it's eight o'clock and you have to feed yourself, just because that, that happens doesn't mean that you have to eat unhealthily. You can have, I want you to scout out ahead of time, know what that go-to takeout meal is that's still gonna be nutritious, that has vegetables, that's not drenched in grease, Write that down, like have that on your back burner, put it on a note in your phone. There's also, you know, grab and go dinners from the grocery that are really easy to prep. So for, you know, for you that might be like a rotisserie chicken and a pre-bagged salad, making sure that you always just grab that whenever you go to the grocery just in case you don't have time to cook and you can just throw it together in like five minutes, okay? You could also, there are some healthy frozen options, especially for lunch meals. They're not, of course, as nutritious as, as cooking your own meals, but they're better than that uh, fallback that's still going to be healthy for you. Helps you feel better when life goes as, when life doesn't go as planned because that's going to happen. You want to be realistic and account for that. So I hope you found those things helpful. Again, just to recap, we talked about never, ever, ever going to the grocery store without a shopping list, even if it's just one that you wrote on your way in. Um, two, we want you to batch your food like you would your social media, so taking advantage of freezing things, um, making extras for leftovers, um, even just prepping ahead of time. If you can prep something for a few weeks and then freeze it, that's going to make the rest of your meal planning easier. That's going to go a long way. We talked about leaving the schedule open for whenever you're going to eat which meals when. And then we finally talked about having those healthy fallback options for when life just gets in the way and your plans get interrupted, having a few healthy go-to picks so that you're not um, undoing all that hard work that you worked to up to that point. So those are my four takeaways. I hope you find it helpful. I'd love to find out which ones you are planning to implement. So please drop in the comments below um, which things you think that you would like to start doing. And then I have a goodie for you. I have put together 
a special recipe guide specifically for entrepreneurs because I know you're busy and I know so th that's yours for the taking. Please enjoy. I would love for you to post some photos of the recipes that you make on the Facebook page. You can also just go to um, click on sign up right above this video on my page uh, where it says sign up. That will take it to you take you to it as well. Finally, we have something really exciting coming up and I'm going to have to tell you quickly because I'm losing daylight here. You probably see it's like the like a natural dimmer is coming over me. But we have a very special free live masterclass coming up on November 10th. It's a Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern, which is 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, what is that? 8 p.m. Central. And it is the Busy Entrepreneur's Strat three strategies to simplify healthy meal planning. We're going to go much deeper into really being on top of your meal planning game. Registration is not yet open, but it will be probably in a matter of days. So be checking email, be checking Facebook to make sure that you get in on that. Again, that's November 10th. So I want to make sure that you mark your calendars. I'm only offering it once till the end of the year. Um, so make sure you go ahead and mark that on your calendar. Be looking for that. In the meantime, let me know what you think of those recipes. Bye for now.